is an object. There are no primitive types, no need to wrap uh, primitive types up as objects. Everything, an integer, a string, um, for example, is an object right from its point of creation in, in a piece of code. And that gives you a lot of advantages because they have methods associated with them straight away. So you can operate on strings, you can operate on integers, you can do things. Ruby's highly dynamic. It's an interpreted language. Uh, it's still quite efficient and um, uh, the, the, the um, perhaps classic example of a Ruby on Rails application, which is Twitter, demonstrates it is scalable. It is efficient as a, as a language, but it is highly dynamic. You can work interactively with it. Uh, you can open up a, a Ruby shell, you can open up a, a Rails command prompt, and you can dynamically uh, experiment or uh, test things work before you actually embed them into your, your code, code based base. But most importantly of all, what really made Ruby take off was the development of a, a, a framework. Um, uh, the use, the, the use of Ruby to produce first, uh, firstly a a successful large project, and then the team who did that factoring out all of the clever solutions they they put in place into a framework to enable other applications to be ba to be developed using the same um, solutions to wide range of problems that they had uh, um, come across in building a web application. They were essentially factored out into the Rails framework and from that point onwards Ruby became almost synonymous with Rails as a framework. Uh, it's unusual to hear Ruby talked about in isolation now. And use of that framework rapidly e expanded. So. Let's start becoming a little bit more interactive. You can stop and take a few moments to make sure you've got NetBeans set up. Uh, the slide here shows the version current at the, the time of preparing these slides, but essentially use the latest version of NetBeans, the latest release version of NetBeans, and you should find the code examples uh, are uh, aligned with that, that version. NetBeans, as I said, gives you, when you're learning Rails, it gives you some advantages because a lot of the tools are um, nicely integrated into NetBeans and so you don't have to do too much setup. NetBeans will do all the setup for you and you'll have a, a <coughs> an interactive Ruby shell available to you. You'll have a, a Rails command prompt available to you when you're developing your project and so forth. Um, uh, but as you as you begin to gain more experience, uh, you may become find you become one of those who wish to put the ID in the background and work much more at the the command prompt, which is the the classic uh, Rails development style. <coughs> so let's let's try it first. If you have NetBeans installed, and this is the first time you've come across Ruby on Rails, then the simplest thing to do is just to open a, a dummy uh, Ruby on Rails project, initiate that project, and then uh, don't worry about any content of that, just give it a name, and don't worry about anything else, just accept the defaults and uh, open the project. Now you can right click on that project and from that menu, select the IRB, the Interactive Ruby Shell. And you'll see that appear at the, the uh, bottom of the, the, the um, NetBeans window. And you can do some things. Um, just to show how dynamic it is, let's, let's do the classic Hello World. And here's Hello World in Java, depending on how you count lines, that's, uh, you might take that as three lines or five lines. Um, but a number of lines of code we require to, to do
do the standard hello world in Java, we need to create a class. We need to have the embedded in what, as a Java program, would be embedded in your consciousness, the pu public static void main method in there. And then in that, then we've got a little bit of complexity to open an, out, uh, an output stream and print hello world to it. So how many lines do we need in, in Ruby in order to be able to do the classic hello world? We need just one line. Uh, we've used put for put string and that's got a string as an argument and uh, if you try that out on the IRB then you'll see it straight away um, <coughs> responds at the command prompt with with hello world. Um, we'll see a little bit more about exactly how that's structured but we don't need a main method the command prompt will uh, will do things for you straight away. It'll respond straight away. Uh, you no, will not need any main method in any of your applications. It's even a little bit neater. We can write a, a, an interesting line. There's actually quite a lot going on that. We've got some interesting things happening here. We've got a method which is being called on an integer. So as I said, everything in in Ruby is an object. 3 is an integer. It's an object of type integer and it's got some methods associated with it. There's a times method and there's a little bit of complexity in that because what that times method in itself is going to do is to take a code code block as a parameter. So in this particular example, and we'll go into exactly the mechanics of this a lot more detail in the next lecture, but there's a lot happening here which enables us to do a lot in one line, one statement. Try that out at the command prompt and you'll see Hello World printed out three times. Um, so a, a lot happening there. Uh, it's quite a nice example because in one line it shows off quite a number of the features that you have in, in Ruby that are used uh, extensively in Rails. Firstly, three is an object. It's got some methods associated with it. In methods, we can actually not just put data as parameters, but we can actually put code blocks as parameters. This is one of the features that helps in uh, keeping to the do not repeat yourself. So you can do something which is rather interesting. Instead of factoring out functions and calling them in key places, some of the skeleton code which is repeated can be factored out into a method and we can then yield to a code block as a parameter to customize that skeleton code. We'll look a little bit more so if you type for return and then return you'll see uh, there is a response given at the command line. I'm going to say what happens. You, you try it and see what happens. Uh, we can do things on an off uh, on, on a uh, an object as as we saw, so the number four point five six seven we can round that straight away. Uh, you can also find out what class of a um, of some uh, of a what the class is of uh, an entity that you you've entered at the command prompt. So again, you can you can try that out if you do four dot class. That's a method which is available on all of Ruby's objects and it will return the class of the, the object. Um, 4.567.class will return uh, a different, uh, it'll give you a different response. So again, something for you to try out and just see what happens. Ruby's dynamically typed, as I said earlier on. It's a highly dynamic language and it does not require you to predefine the types of, of the objects or the types of the, the objects that variables are pointing at. Um, I'll say again a little bit more about that. It is important to remember that a variable is pointing at an object. The object itself is strictly typed. It's the variables that are dynamically typed. 
So what we're going to do here is to point a variable at two different types of object. Um, and we're not going to crash the system. So try this again. Try this out yourself. We're going to point n at an object of type integer. It has a value 1. So n equals 1 is an assignment statement that is pointing the, um, the variable n at an object of type integer which has a value 1. So if we do n.class on that, then it'll tell us that's an integer. Now I'm going to do something which will crash Java, which is to point n at the same variable. I'm going to reassign that to the string fish paste. You'll see, if you do that yourself, the command prompt doesn't complain. It silently obeys. And now if we do n.class, then we'll see that n is of type string. It is now pointing to a string. There's no conflict there. It's still strongly typed in that it has a type, but it will assume the type of whatever object it is pointing at. Um, we can do other things. So depending on which at which point you do n plus 4, plus is overload, can be overloaded either as uh, a numerical addition or as concatenation. Um, you can also s get the size of uh, either an integer or a string and if you're not quite sure what methods are available then again you can uh, ask Ruby what methods are accessible and as I said everything from the most primitive object onwards has some methods associated with it because the the topmost object in Ruby has some built-in methods which will be inherited by everything in, in 